Matthew 19, verse 14. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. What did Jesus do? He laid hands. That was before the cross. But now, after he was risen, look at what he himself says of laying hands. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. I want to enlighten your eyes regarding these things so you can be clear of them. Hebrews, the book to the Hebrew, all with Bible, because if you don't have the word, you can't verify nothing. And I need for you to leave here so when someone questions you, you can say, this is written in this way. If it isn't that way, let's erase it or throw it out. Or let's investigate what Bible are we reading. Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the rudiments of the doctrine of Christ... Let us go on to perfection, not lying hand, again the foundation of repentance of, from dead works, from the faith towards God of the doctrine of baptism, of laying on of hands. Who teaches this? The Lord, right? Through the Apostle Paul. What does it say? To leave the laying of hands. And what did Jesus do before the cross? Laying hands. Jesus would see it, someone demon possessed and he would lay hands. I cast you out. So now he himself, after he dies, he says, let's go on to perfection. So now we don't lay hands. Now the word is the one that does everything. So before he would lay hands and now he says, leaving the laying of hands. Why? Because after he was risen, say after he was risen, if you do not know how to make that difference, you will never understand the Bible. Because it's that after the cross, everything changed. Look at a warning that there is now in the first letter to Timothy. A warning. Let's return Hebrews, the first letter of Timothy. Everything that we do, we do it in the letters of Paul because Paul was the master builder of our salvation, of our faith. So if we want to learn properly, we need to go the, to the Apostle Paul because he was the apostle chosen for us, the Gentiles. So then in chapter 4 of the first letter to Timothy, look at what it says. But now the Spirit expressly says, say, expressly says, here there is no doubt that in the latter days or latter times, some will apostatize from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of what? Doctrines of demons. It says, so the demons that spoke to Jesus, so the demons begged him saying, if you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swines. And he said to them, go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swines and suddenly the whole herd of swines ran violently down and the steep place into the sea and perish in the water. This is a case where Jesus would cast out demons. You know what it is to cast out demons? Teachings of demons, of casting out demons. So before the cross, Jesus cast out demons. But when he died on the cross, he destroys the devil and all of the demons were destroyed and they were done away with. But a person that does not understand that by not dividing the before and after the cross, well, he goes to a congregation and they tell him, I think there are people here that are demon possessed. Come forward. If you have headaches, constant headaches or issues with your heart. If you are having evil dreams, those are demons of nicotine, of, of this, of alcohol, of sex. Come forward, we're going to deliver you. So then they begin violating the first principle, laying hands. When the apostle says, leaving that, because that is dead works, 